Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's morning. It's Martin Luther (laughs) King Day, so we're actually podcasting earlier in the day. So you're catching us fresh and early. (laughs) It's actually noon almost. But anyway, welcome to the Knitting Place podcast. (laughs) This is podcast number 172. I am Dinah. You can find me at The Knitting Place on Instagram, Ravelry, and Facebook. I am Pam. Pam Sapp on Instagram and Ravelry, and Pam Sapp ends on Facebook. I feel like I'm off screen. There you go. No, I'm good. There you go. She's on screen right behind us. Uh, <laughs> where should we start? How was your weekend? Good. It was good. I'm like jumping good. right in. <laughs> yeah, it was a good weekend. I'm yeah. trying to think, you know. I did the you mundane do? jobs like an oil change on okay. my, you know, there's fun things. But um, it was, you know, any time that you don't have a schedule, it's lovely, right? So you had no Trying schedule. Trying to think what I did. And it, I really, you know, I don't even remember right now. I know I went for an oil change, got my nails done. I did those fun things. Speaking well, then, of nails, uh, right? someone left a comment last time. Is that right? We need to share our nail colors. Oh, well, again, this is Velvet Crush. Which apparently, well, apparently, I know, I used to wear it years ago. Yes. And I picked it up and I said, oh, Velvet Crush. Like. I said, I haven't (laughs) seen this in ages. So we, so I said, now I'm on a Velvet Crush kick. But um, it's the same way with a lighter color. There was a coral I used to wear all the time years ago. And the name escapes me, but, you know. Nice. That's they biggest, look good. That's the biggest secret I have. You have sparkles on your nails. I have sparkles on my nails. She's Last a week, girl. so I've been doing gel. Mm. I don't know how long I'm going to do this for, but I have to say it's easy because my nails are thin. They break. Um, I can't tell you the gel color, but it's uh, an ombre. I don't know if you could see it. The tips yeah, are glitter. Yeah, but they're two different things, right? What do you mean? In other words, to get the glitter on the top, they used. Well, they did the color on the base, and yes. then they did the. Then they sparkle. put the glitter on the tips, and then, and then they, they brushed it, it up right. to kind of get the ombre feel. And last time I had ombre as well right. with glitter, right. but it was more confetti glitter, like a, a sparkly, different color glitter. Yes, yeah. I yeah. wanted it for the new year. There you My go. bling. Now you've got your <laughs> bling on your nails. Yeah. Well, I find you know not that I've ever had great nails, but I find. That I take a vitamin D, no, vitamin D. I think I take a, like a gel cap of vitamin D. And I think that makes a big difference. Really? I do. Because I ran out of them for a while and I wasn't taking them. And you felt a difference in your Yeah, I, I really do think nails. so. A little gel cap, you know. But whatever, who knows. I'll look into that. There you go. <laughs> I have to get these off. I know it's bad for me. Especially because yeah, you stick your fingers in the UV light and all of that nonsense. Well, you know now the it's big like I go thing natural is, with my hair and then I they, do toxins. I got have something. <laughs> well, they they the big thing now is the chrome nails, which you had. That was fun. I want to do that again. Everyone is doing the chrome nails, but you have to have the gel to do it. You can't do it with just regular nails. Which I find surprising that they haven't come out with a liquid exactly to, to, do to chrome, replicate. To, exactly. that. I'm sure they have. I have to look We've it up. But I mean, it. it's almost like a, remember years ago for frosted the frosted colors. Yeah, it's years kind ago. of like that. But it's better. It's it's, it's got more of a shine to it. Yeah, so. I like the chrome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I almost did. Uh, who was it that came in? I think it was Jan. Mm. Uh, she'd come in with these like tiger eye nails. Oh my god! Really? Mm. That's how I figured. And then when I went to see it, she had like a real tiger eye mm-hmm, colorway. Mm-hmm. I don't know who, which um, company her Home nail salon it. uses because they're all different. Yeah, they're all yeah. under different Depending brands. On what it is, yeah. But when I asked for that tiger's eye look, the they color was, what, no. no, they knew it. They had a whole card of it, oh, but, but it was the not color the wasn't color. the same. So what do you mean? So it's a look. It's I a saw. polish that looks like the color looks like tiger's eye. Yes, or was they, there a design in her nail? No, you know. Well, so the application for the um, chrome is they take this eyeshadow brush mm. and they rub the chrome right, right, right. powder on. I don't know how they do the tiger's eye, but it's. I don't know if it's the light that does it, if it's the, the way they put it on, but it right. creates this. Um, finish mm-hmm. that is two-toned mm-hmm. so like part of your nail oh, nice. is brown and part of it is really? black Oof. at least on jan's oh, nails and they look gorgeous but the colors that my salon has unfortunately, they didn't have no, the same not ones, the right? same you have to go so around. i didn't do it yeah 
But now I'm on Instagram looking at nail inspo. Oh, geez. Another thing to go down the rabbit hole on, right? Let me tell you. I swear. It's crazy. I went down the rabbit hole this weekend on, I'm not going to go into detail, but looking for people that I used to know, that I used to work with. Not okay. people not people from like high school or anything no, like no. that. No, no. Probably but like people, Lord and Taylor, like more recent. Right. People that I used to work with, the gals that I had an apartment with in the city, you know, pe- people that cause I used to work at a law firm, some did of the you, attorneys that... Uh, yeah, I mean it's amazing what you what you see, but I don't want anyone to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I can look, but they can't. Then we'll like it. That's so funny. anyway interesting. So what you had an exciting weekend? Tell I me about your did. weekend. I went to visit Rose. Rose mm. is one hundred and twelve. She is the oldest. Can you woman. imagine one hundred? The I oldest can't. woman where in Nassau in, County in New York. Oh, in, in the, the state. state of New York. Really? We ended up googling the statistics, which is crazy. Wow. Um, and she's number 16, which it, in the world, not in the world, in, in the, the country. Really? Which means there are 15 people who are older than her in all of the United States. And do they give the ages of those other people? If you look it up, it, it could says, tell you. yeah, That's definitely. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. And then <coughs> she was one of three or one of four <clears throat> in Bel Air rehab. She's <clears throat> grandfathered in for the nursing yeah. portion they're yeah. no longer doing that Uh-oh. it's going to be just a rehab but <laughs> well, that's there even were, better i think while we were upstairs they were in the in the great room mm. celebrating i think there were three birthdays no three other people upstairs or two other people she was one of three that were over 100 get out of here yes Jeez. I mean, it's crazy, just crazy. Now you think living to 105 is is like a big accomplishment, but there are people that live <laughs> crazy. And she was great. I mean, she was great she at 105. So great. everyone has was been she asking chocolate Was she well, in chocolate? Well, of course. So I have to say, <laughs> I was prepping myself the entire ride mm-hmm. because I didn't see her last year. Mm-hmm. I had COVID and I couldn't go. We saw her at the beginning of the year. I saw her at the yeah. yeah. But um, it's been a long span, and shame on her. me that I hadn't seen her. Right. So I was prepping myself for the fact that she may not recognize me. And I can't hold tears back. Mm-hmm. So when I got there, mm-hmm. <clears throat> lo and behold, she didn't recognize me. But she always has. She, I mean, up through until 111, now, that's pretty darn she good. Has. Mm. So, of course, the tears came da- running yeah. down my face, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, like a child. <laughs> um, so it was a bit emotional, but... I just, you know, I wiped the tears away and I just stayed there as long as I could. It was about until almost five. Did you have a conversation with her? I spoke to her. I was persistent. I was telling was she her about answering your, Was she asking questions about no. anything? No. She was pretty much answering. Like, she was on her, my daughter is the most beautiful. Her, She's got the softest hands. Rhea, her daughter was right, there, which right. was wonderful. And um, into her current life. Yes, things saying, about that. Well, no, it was really more. She's my mo- most, you know, precious prize. Right. She was the best thing that ever happened to me. Things that she always said she about always Rose. Said that, right. I mean, about Rayo. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Um, and then I was sharing my wedding pictures. I was showing, uh, showing kids, I, the kids. I showed her a picture yeah. of her with Danielle and Sophie yeah. to jog her memory. And she said. And then she said, who's that? And I said, that's Danielle. That's Sophie, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and she said, well, I can't really see that well. Fine. We just, you know, let, let the pictures go. And then she said, I like your smile. Mm-hmm. So as I was talking to her more and more, I felt like she was connecting a little bit. Correct. I asked her what her favorite color was. Right, and she, she said, said, well, I don't really have a favorite color. Mm-hmm. And then her um, Rhea said, you know, come on, mom, what's your favorite color? So then she looks at me and she said, red. red I said, good. well, that's why I brought you red roses, <laughs> you know, for your birthday. Right, right. And then I asked her, she said, is that cake for me? I said, yes. I said, it's your birthday. She says, is it January 13th? She said that. Mm-hmm. That's very good. Diana, that's very good. Very good. <laughs> so then she's, she says, how old am I? I said, you're 112 she says i'm an old bag <laughs> she's <laughs> dying rose was one for the one-liners amazing but when she would be here in the store she, she would never, always have the she one-liners. always had something to her say pearls, the her, best. her words of wisdom her pearls of wisdom pearls of she wisdom. always had them love 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 god bless um, her so anyway she wanted the chocolate cake she wanted the chocolate cake you know, it was very cute because the director at the um in the in Bel Air, yeah. 
had brought a sheet cake and then there were so there were two pieces of you know two options i said do you want the vanilla cake or the chocolate cake she said chocolate of course <laughs> and of course she was drinking her coffee so everyone asks what are her secrets yes she'll tell you chocolate cake black coffee um she knows she has coffee chocolate cake uh any type of chocolate dark chocolate she yeah. loves chocolate anything chocolate that's pretty much her vice and, and rose would come in i mean she would have for, for lunch she'd have a, a banana. banana she'd have a banana i mean everybody remembers the banana and i think she was just saving her calories so that she can have, she ice have cream. chocolate and i yeah she loved ice she loves ice cream too but if but you came in with a piece of chocolate or a piece of cake or so a, a sweet she couldn't wait for it i mean we, we four o'clock the you know the door would close we'd Turn on the coffee pot and have our dessert. Have it was dessert. awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very sweet. Rose time. It was rose. Yeah. That coffee the time was rose time. Yeah. Well, so, it's, so, it's so good that you got to see her, though, Diana. Absolutely. You know, so, it, you know, it, it, it always is hurt, hurtful when, you know, you see the the memory but there was slipping a, sil a little bit. But there was a silver lining. What was that? So when I, you know, I was giving her cake and yeah, as we yeah. spent more time, yeah, she yeah. looked at Rhea and she says, who is this? And Rhea says, Mom, it's Dinah. And she says, from the knitting store? Well, she did say that. And then the tears that. rolled she down. She did say that. I bet you, not that this is, a, if you were there like every week, so it would jog her memory. So, Rhea and Frankie are going down to Florida. So you're going to go visit her while they're gone? Gina, her granddaughter, is in Florida right now. So there's about a week that they're, they're not going to, no one's going to be there to visit Rose. So right. I volunteered to go. Um, at the end of the month. Oh, good. So at the I'm end hoping of January. at the end of January. Well, if I can go with you, I'll go. The 30th. Just let me know when okay. it is. What day is that? Saturday? It's actually a Wednesday, but I will make time to go on the weekend if you want. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would Date. like to see Rose. Yeah. Bring so, her a piece of chocolate. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After eating the cake, she goes, and oh, she's, And she was so she says, oh, <laughs> she's, Is that what she said? Well, that was the whole thing. When she was in this, since she's been in, in this rehab, they, they, remember her appetite? Rhea would feed her, and you and I would be like, we were afraid she was going to choke. <laughs> yes. But she was so, eating. Poor thing, she had pneumonia. Oh, she did? Yes. Mm -hmm. And she was just coming out of it. Mm -hmm. So she was still getting like tested for it. Yeah, yeah. They were giving her a nebulizer because she was a coughing, little a li yeah. coughing up a little bit. Yeah. But anyway, she I'm so her. happy I went to visit her. She loved her chocolate cake. She adored the roses and even the recreation. Even the, uh, not recreation, I keep saying that, the rehab got her flowers and the sheet oh, cake. Was it was lovely. beautiful. It was 112, my It goodness. was beautiful. Remember last Everyone year came in. when we went in that room that you're talking about? The, the, yeah, the, the recreation the, room. The recreation room, and they were playing some game, the other ladies. But Rose wasn't, <laughs> she, you know, you don't have to play the game. These women were playing some game. They were gathering. what she, she was saying. She Rose says, was why like, she screamed? Why she fell they, asleep. She says, why the woman they, was talking on the bullhorn. <laughs> <laughs> why is she screaming why is she <laughs> screaming god bless rose That's so funny god bless her did she talk about knitting at all no i took out my press flowers did she so, say anything about it um she looked at it i said it's mosaic knitting you know trying to yeah see if just, she said anything. yeah but she picked it up she looked at it she didn't try to knit it or anything right 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 but she definitely was interested in it definitely okay. yeah there you go yeah there's so that was nice there's yeah. rose. <laughs> so after all of that god bless her. it was uh well, well that it's was always nice worth weekend. the trip. that was the highlight of your weekend that was the highlight sure. of my yeah. weekend for yes. sure then we met with the dog trainer that was oh, another that's small interesting. highlight that's nice and how'd that go it went well um we taught sit down <laughs> touch well, everybody's got to learn that though yeah right? yeah, yeah yeah of yeah. course we have homework every what day what does touch me so interesting touch is when you put your hand down like mm -hmm. this and you want the dog to put bring their, their snout oh their snout to yeah. your hand so why, instead why of come that? it's called touch uh <clears throat> come is more of a command when they're off leash like to try to get them to come back i guess if uh there's a distraction touch is more right. when you're like in the house and right. i don't know okay and then leave it leave it is a tough one that because he's leave nipping oh, that's yeah hard. That so we're hard. trying to teach leave it so he's not nippy on us so we'll let you know there you go well listen you see what happens yep and that's it you got a tough time of year to train too because you know oh my goodness this is when i, I got holly in like december as well and that was a very tough winter because i had four kids this coming week at home 
Yeah, it was freezing. freezing. I'd be outside in the snow. I'd be outside in the cold weather. And How old were they when you got Holly? <clears throat> they were um, four, five, seven, yeah. and nine. Okay. So, I mean, that is the toughest time. Mm. That's pretty much, my kids were slightly, a couple years older. Yeah. The hardest time. Like, yeah. I feel like I didn't do right by Shaggy. Well, yeah, it was very difficult. Difficult. Because, it, you know, I can't leave the kids in the house alone. You know, I would take them in the backyard and it's I would, not a, yeah. you know, it was just very difficult. And, and she was a terrier. She was a, you know, uh, um, I can't think of a Karen terrier. And, uh, I think terriers tend to be a little stubborn. Okay. With training a little bit. I mean, she was like 90% trained, you know, so, but, but, you know, like, she was, a, you know, she was, Shaggy was kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you but, go. So now you're starting. So we're starting, and I mean, it's a little bit easier. I mean, it's a lot easier. Well, you don't have the kids. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm a lot more devoted, and I have extra time to, mm -hmm. you know, give love and attention sure, and, sure, sure. you know, read all the signs, but it's still a challenge. Hey, and listen. He's just so cute. Training though. is always difficult. I know. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's where they get you with the cute face. He's too cute. Anyhow, what are you wearing? My Sunday cardigan? Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I have to remember to check the names. Um, it was from Petite Knit, correct? Yes. And I used um, Rama, uh, and I Fennel. used Fennel, and I used, um, oh, alpaca I used the alpaca lin. lin with it, which is another um, Rama. Rama yarn. And um, And people always say, like, you can see, I wanted to depill it today before I came here, and I didn't have time. But it's not that bad. It's Honestly. really not that bad, but it's it just it it generates fuzz. It you know, plumes, plumes, right? And so, um, but it's a really cozy, comfortable. Looks top. great on you. Thank you, Dinah. Then, what are you wearing? Another pin. Uh, excuse me, petite oh, knit is that design. Petite knit it too? is. Oh, it's the um, Eva cardigan. I will stand up because I did shorten it. I wore it last week on Instagram, and we had a lot of interest. So let me show you. It's short. It's cropped. It's 19 inches in length. Uh, a lot of people questioned the length. <clears throat> we did shorten it. I shortened it by three inches. I did not knit it. This was knit from my um, knitter. Mm -hmm. We used Wolf Folk Fleck. As mm -hmm. you can see, it's a tweed. Mm -hmm. uh, shortened it in the length. So what I had the knitter do is she knit eight inches to the ribbing, and then she knit three inches in rib. So... With all the modifications, this was a size, um, I think it was size. a small, which is a 44-inch finished bust. Uh, so I have four inches of positive ease. Now keep in mind, I did not go for the size that my actual bust is, which would reflect a larger finished bust. I mm -hmm. went for something that I wanted to wear, which is something a little bit leaner. Mm -hmm. And I like and the 44 so inch, ease, right, yeah. 44 inch finished bust. Mm -hmm. So you could still see it's roomy. It's just but not it's very not, boxy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I used seven skeins of the Wool Folk Fleck, F-L-E-C-K. And you can find the yarn on the website. And if you have any questions, bring a couple of skeins. Oh, here. thanks, Pam. Oh, it comes in an assortment of colors. Wonderful. Very neutral so, palette. Uh, as you can see, it's the tweed, which is really soft. It feels like cashmere. It's got a high micron in the merino. However, it's 100% merino wool. I think it's called Ovis. Is that the merino? I thought Ovis. So it's the Eva cardigan. Uh, it's shortened by three inches. And what else can I tell you? I used the same gauge yarn. I used a size small versus the size that I would typically knit for myself based on my bust measurement. And Pam is kind enough to show you all the colors that they're available in. Well, this is Dinah's color, I believe, right? Uh, no, no, I'm wearing the black. Oh, the black, jeez, yeah. look at that. Let's see, it's fleck number five. <clears throat> fleck number five, and it's, uh, what is it? Is it Ovis? Or, oh, Did yeah, 90% Ovis, mm -hmm. Ultimate Merino, and 10% Donegal. And the Donegal is what's giving is you the, the fleck. Tweed yeah. Print. So, fleck number five. Here you go. So, here, these, I'll show you these three first. Dinah did her 
um, your 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 um, knit, oh yeah, with, my um, cowl from with, Sweater Freak, uh, Sweater Freak, and this the mystery knit along. Mm -hmm. So there's like a natural, there's like a beige, there's a camel. This to me is I would consider it to be a taupe. It's like a little brown color, and oh, is that the same? No, that's a no, gray. it's different. That's a gray, gray taupe, and brown. And then is black. Yeah. So you can see so they're these all are neutrals. all. They're all neutrals. Love this yarn. Very and soft. It's like they say it's a DK, right? Yes. Is that what they say? 22 to 26 stitches. Yeah, so to DK sport. You could, you could use it for sport too. Mm -hmm. Really soft. I've love always it. been a sucker for tweed. I always love tweeds. I always love but a this tweed is yarn. different because it's not as rustic right. as a true donical. Right, 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 right. So right. I'm a sucker for this yarn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the squish factor is like, wow. Absolutely. It's beautiful. It's like, don't squeeze. <laughs> the wool folk. <laughs> so we didn't get this, but again, if you're interested in it, we were saying that Dinah used seven skeins, right? Yes, I think it was. Did we say that it would be for 1,200 yards? How yes. much would it be? Um, what is it, 160 yeah. in the skein? Yeah. 1,200. So if you didn't shorten it, I think you would need eight about skeins. eight skeins, yeah, right. correct? Exactly. So it's entirely up to you. And of course, if you prefer a more... um more boxy fit or something with more positive ease you can but certainly you didn't change the sleeves at all or anything uh i'm did i shorten the sleeves did, did you uh, i didn't think so i may have yeah did you hold on i'll tell you what it is what i had seen um i had seen someone's mod not modified a modified picture of their eva cardigan and i fell in love with it which is why it. i had our knitter knit it to those specifications mm -hmm. but i believe the eva cardigan does have long sleeves let me pull it up right now and i should have measured that but i didn't well again that's why you would have the eighth skein right because if you did make it in, what is it maybe two and a half inches shorter than yeah this is i mean it's a full cardigan here it is yeah it has long sleeves long sleeves yeah, she made them a little shorter <clears throat> So I definitely have a more but cross honestly, look. That's what people tend to do with the sweaters. They a lot of people do modify the sleeves because they like them well, shorter. She has them they long. Like them long. Yeah. Well, I she mean, does long sleeves. Look yeah. at this. I've got these cuffed. Right. She has them long. Yeah. I mean, they're to her knuckles, yeah. and there's still a little room. Today seems like a petite knit day. Yeah. Right now that we yeah. think no. about it, it was <laughs> unintentional. But <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> She's got great patterns. Definitely. Great patterns. Okay. So do you have any FOs? No, I do not. I uh, have do I. continued my work. I decided I was going to be a knit on one thing to get it done. And I was debating. I'm getting close. I've done my, my Look at you. 17 inches. I went a little bit farther than 17, maybe 18, 18 and a half. And I began my decrease. You can see... Where can you see it? I you know you can see it. It's very subtle. Yeah, you see the decrease yes. over here coming It's from in. the marker. So Correct. what Pam has done is she marked where she was done with her increases. She continued to knit straight right. for a certain length. Right. Now, right here, actually, this I, is about her center point. Yeah, but I think actually if you go back, this marker... I think I took this is where that this is where, where they actually yeah, took starts. out that yeah. was my right side marker. Gotcha. So it's so a, pretty it's much from here. like there to here. Yep. And then she it's, you could see it, but it's slightly tapering at this point. Yeah. It's starting to go it's starting to go in. Decrease. Right. And uh I have I think there are ten ten repeats. Okay. Of, and I've done two. It'll be done like today. Right. And the more you do, you know, the the more the the less stitches you're working right. with. Right. But it's like 160 rows of decrease. Right. That's a, <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. A lot of rows. I saw that. I said, oh, my goodness. And I use the uh, Art Yarns uh, Merino Cloud, which uh, is DK. To me, it's a little thinner than a DK, but it's a lovely yarn. And it's hand-dyed, and the colors are delicious. absolutely the rich, vibrant colors. And again, another fiber that has an amazing squish factor. Yeah. She's got cashmere blended with the merino wool. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's a delight to knit with. It's got a lot of yardage, too. I think it's yes. 437. 37 yards. Yeah. Which is nice. It's a pretty mm -hmm. nice skein. Very good. So, what you considering have for hand dyed. Yeah. yeah. That's not bad at it's all. Not, it's a great price point. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, I am have been continuing to work on my artist. Yes. Uh, I've increased to the next section. I was actually telling Pam I had to rip back like three rows. 
<laughs> annoying. Uh, I overwent my distance. Are you ready to change colors? I am ready to do the oh, one fun. by one color stranded work again. Oh, so fun. I'm in my second, about to begin. See, my that's second. what knitting things like this is so much fun. You, because so, of the change. You're yes. changing colors, yeah. you're changing stitches. Uh, someone had asked if I can make this kit up, and mm -hmm. I mentioned that I would look it up. We will definitely have to revamp our kits because people are still interested right, in knitting right. the artist shawl. Mm -hmm. Natasha Hornby is hosting She's a knit along. Knit -along yes. Mm -hmm. It was her New Year's knit along cast on and she has a special Facebook group with prizes. I don't know if I mentioned last time I contributed to one of the prizes. So if anybody would like to participate. How long is on it going on for? Do you know? Till the end of February. Mm -hmm. So you have a bit of time. I mean at this point it's a, it's a fairly large saw. I would say you should hop on it. Hop on and get started. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have any other whips? No, that's okay. it. So my only other whip that I have is the um, pressed flowers cardigan. I was telling Pam I had knit my swatch with one half, one end of the skein, and then I cast on last time. I think I showed it to you with the other half uh, or other end of the skein, and I was unhappy, so I ripped it out. I figured now's the time. I wanted this darker, deeper color at the bottom of my sweater. And that's as far as I'm going to go with micromanaging my skein. Uh, <laughs> I might, I, I will stand corrected, I will wind my skeins and decide which end I will continue with or proceed with. But, but I'm not cutting, cutting. No, anything. no, no. Yeah. I'm just going to let the spin cycle do the work. Okay, so nice. I started my second row of flowers and I'm almost done with the first chart. I've got to get to 12 inches before the divide and we meet in the beginning of February so that's my goal. This was a little setback having to rip out that 12 inches from week. the bottom. Yes from, from the, the cast on oh, correct. Yes, you've already got a nice four inches. Yeah, four inches. Mm -hmm. Third of the way done. <laughs> There it was go. a little setback. So no, those are my two happens. FOs, the that pressed happens. flowers. I will say people did sign up after we posted our knit along last week um, on the podcast. It's not too late. You might have stash line, uh, stash yarn. A lot of people do. This is an old, I shouldn't say yeah. old, but this pattern has been released uh, quite a bit ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and since she has then, many she has the shawl, yeah, she has yeah. the cowl, a hat. Right. So... Um, the pullover, this is a cardigan, it's knit flat. So <clears throat> we're not covering the techniques in the pullover and the cowl or the hat, but you are still welcome to sign up. Uh, the first recording was, uh, the first Zoom was recorded. It's on our private Facebook group. And we still have two more sessions I left. I think the that next will be one left. is the 6th. The 6th, right? yeah. February 6th. February 6th. Right, so you still have um, almost three weeks. Thank you. So it's not too late. There you go. All right. Uh, shall we talk about what news? are we doing? Well, let you start. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say there's um, one of our customers, Phyllis. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. She uh, uh, was kind enough to share that she's been watching a few podcasts and uh, she talked about a few knit alongs that are going on. So we wanted to announce that if any of you follow, um, the Knitting Posse, they're hosting a knit along in conjunction with Thea Coleman, Baby Cocktail Knits mm -hmm. um, is her website, and they're doing a knit accessory or anything Thea Coleman. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time this podcast publishes, uh, you'll s well, we're going to show a couple of kits. I think we have one kit. Uh, she has lots of accessories, and if any of those accessories speak to you, we would be happy to um, guide you in purchasing yarn, or you can just purchase well, a la carte yeah, for she's got a bunch a of hat. Stuff, yeah. yeah, it DK Worcester Aaron. She's known for her um, she's texture, got her cables, cables. Uh, we decided to make a kit for a sweater. Actually, it's called Mestia. Mm -hmm. Is that how you pronounce it? I Is think it? so. I think so. Uh, Mestia or Mestija, it's a silent it. H, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll share a picture. It's a beautiful cardigan. Again, another one like like this, it's boxy. Uh, I forget the number of inches of positive ease did it have. Was it? Let me look that up. This is the picture. 
which is really cute. So it's funny because this almost has the same kind of, um, let's say style. It's a shorter cardigan. Here you'll see the full length sleeve. And as you can see, there's this beautiful textured chevron that's going on in there. It's got um, lace and texture, which I absolutely fell in love with. We're showing a yarn. Uh, we have two options to share with you. There's a non-superwash yarn by Bichet Bouche. Uh, it's called Le Lamb's Wool, and the range of that yarn is 19 to 21 stitches. So the pattern calls for a 20 stitch gauge. So we're offering this as an amp, um, one option. It is a rustic yarn. Does it feel really rustic? No, but it's definitely, it doesn't feel like the wool folk fleck that has that squish factor. However, it's a delight to knit with. Uh, I've knit with the Petite Lamb's Wool. Pam has knit with Le Gros. Yeah, I've and, also knit with Le yeah, Gros. Yeah. This happens to be the gauge right in the middle. Right. Uh, so Le Lamb's Wool. We have a couple of shades to show you. Uh, this one is called Soft Dark Gray. So that's probably the closest right. to the sample. As opposed to light gray. Light gray, exactly. <laughs> then we have, um, this one is called gray brown. And then we also have... This is the color that Dinah used in her, uh, what's that called? Asteri. Asteri. Yep. Dark rose gray. Correct. So we have those four options to show you uh, for the cardigan. And it's, I believe it's seven skeins. Seven skeins, and you can always add if you'd like to make it bigger. Correct. Uh, so we we also, also have a non-superwash option. Go ahead, Pam. There you go. Let's go take it, Chris. It's Malabrigo. It's hand-dyed, but again, it's non-superwash. These kits for the same size sweater include seven skeins. Just got more yardage in the skein. Right. So this colorway is called Gris. It's a medium gray. Denim. Classic, stunning, pretty. Valentina. Beautiful light pink, which is a shop favorite. Ravelry red. Isn't like a little red. And a nice classic red. Aquamarine. And yeah. if you look and at you the can aquamarine, see the you see the color change. Yeah. yeah. Very pretty. Some basic colors. It's a real cute sweater. Um did you you know, you were gonna look up and see the positive ease, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's no, crazy. that's okay. Um but it looks like a fun, we like to cardigans. She's got some great, <clears throat> if you go on her website, which is uh, babycocktails.com, Baby she has her projects separated by category, cardigans, um, pullovers, hats. There it is, yep. There's another close-up. Hats. Uh, she's got scow scowls, listen to me, sc scarves, cowls. She's got glove mittens. All that fun stuff and then hats so um, it's always fun participating in a knit along and they, I'm sure they're sharing pictures there's a hashtag a sweater shown worn with five inches of positive ease so not tremendous but definitely has positive ease so you could check your yardage I think we went for the size um, the fifth size was it 48 and a quarter Pam What'd you say again? I'm sorry. Did we do the 48 and a quarter? On this, we did so many, I don't remember now. Hold on, I'll check. <laughs> sorry, guys. I think we did. I think we did. I think we did. And if you if you do do it, and you, they have a hashtag, it's called hashtag cocktails and posse cow. So if you go on their Instagram, you'll see what it is. Go to one of their posts. It's cocktails and posse right. cow. So 48 and a quarter inches is the size that we kitted up through. Right, right. So there's, I mean, for me, if I were to do, if I were to make the cardigan. You wouldn't do the 48. I might, mm -hmm. but it would be a lot more positive ease than uh, what they typically You might for. decide to take some of the positive ease and put it into a little more length. Maybe you don't want it quite as cropped. And I don't know what the length is. I'm not, you know. Right. They are shorter, but it doesn't mean that they're too short. So right. check and see what like Dinah's wearing nineteen now. She likes nineteen. She For, might but say this that one was a cropped right. right but that, I I do like this length a correct. lot. Yeah, that's what I'm I, saying. You know, yeah. I could wear a, yeah. my a button down shirt. I don't mind that my shirt is hanging out. My little um, 
t-shirt that's right. underneath. Right. Um, the size before it is a 44 inch. So being that I knit this to a 44 inch finished bust, right. I may do the, the Mestia in the same right. size. Right, it depends. Yeah, exactly. But always take that into account when you're picking your size. You know, try to look at the length and... We always say, pick your favorite sweater, right? That right. You like to wear. I, mean, I do like, like the way this fits. I don't mind that it's a little bit shorter than some of my other cardigans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I happen to love the texture that's going on. Yep. Um, I think it's knit from the bottom up. I believe so. It's worked flat. It's a written pattern. There are cables. There's a chart. It's seamed. Uh, there's I think she's got a cable on the up. side over here. Is, is that the one? I'm getting, I'm mixing that up with another one she had. She, she has cables. Some, she has some great, um, uh, some great um, patterns to choose from. And as you could see, the back is all in the chevron as well. So you're not going to get bored with this. Love it. Yep. Okay. <coughs> so that's our first Excuse kit. Me. Second kit. Second kit. One of the other, um, we one. decided to do another, um, we decided to do two vests, actually. Um, this one here is called Vest Number Two. It's designed by My Favorite Things on Ravelry. I believe she had a vest number one. It may have been a round neck. Uh, I'm not sure what vest number two which is not the spring edition probably a heavier version yeah. but this one is a fingering weight plus some mohair uh, i love the deep v it's just uh, a basic it's a cute it's a basic, basic wardrobe, vest right uh, we simply kitted it up with um santa scorn sunday and matching mohair so we'll just quickly th go through the colors this is a blue uh we didn't have the matching blue this is 6062, but we paired it with a very close color in Kid Silk Haze. I think the rest of the colors are the coordinating mohairs. Uh, this is the powder pink. This one is the putty. Black. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Pam. That's okay. The light yellow. I mean, all of these are great basic colors. Mm -hmm. Love this khaki green. I gave, I gave you the blue, right, Dad? Yes. Yeah. This is like, oh, you know what? I don't have the dark gray. Dark gray. I think okay. it might you be know. over there. There it is, yeah. Uh, that's like a burnt red. Absolutely gorgeous. I like that red. Yes, it's a gorgeous red. It's like Not great bright. vest, a little pop of color over Fabulous. a basic outfit. is always nice, right? Then we have the beige. Mm -hmm. And then the gorgeous dark gray, gray. Mm -hmm. a basic Love this one. so i mean they're all great or even an, a navy one with a stunning with jeans or i don't think any of these could be bad mm -hmm. i mean literally they're all ne pretty fairly neutral colors mm -hmm. um basic colors uh if you don't want a solid you can always look at the um, suburban stitcher the madeline tosh oh, sure. if you're looking yeah, for yeah, a hand dyed yeah, yeah. yarn absolutely yeah. and of course we have the matching mohair in suburban stitcher uh, you can always try to tone, you know, some people don't like the yeah, strong Kokan. hand dye. We have Kokan. Kokan would be lovely. But that would be nice, too. Um, we actually have the Debbie and Kokan with the matching mohair. Oh, that, that would be, would be so nice. fun. That would Any be nice. of the, like, matching mohairs with uh, Kokan. Oh, That's that another great that idea. That would be nice, too. Pam has something in her queue. We'll let <laughs> Pam share this one. I, you know, I saw this a, a while ago on Ravelry, and I liked it. I do like vests, and believe it or not, I've never knit a vest. Really? Never knit a vest, and I do love vests. But in any event, I saw this one, and I wasn't sure. At first I said, gee, I don't know. But then, I, you know, I really do like it. It's called the Lulu Vest. And it's got That's that easy. great... What? Lucy. Like Lucy, Lucy, yeah. And it's got that great button detail on the side. It has positive ease. I mean, she says eight inches of positive ease, but I don't think I would go that large myself. One of the testers, no, take that back. One of the people who knit it on Ravelry said that why fuss with the buttonholes? She just sewed it down. Oh, interesting. Because so there's she so much didn't... positive ease to get it on. Right. You she says, I'm not going to fool button. around. And I said, you know what? I would probably do that. You don't need to put, put exactly. that in. Exactly. So she uses, uh, runs from, well, let's start first. It runs from double extra small to 5XL. And it runs from bus sizes. Well, you have to be careful with her bus sizes now. Let's let's revisit that, Dinah. 
Where did the other bus sizes go? Are they on the second page? That's to fit size, but the actual fit the actual bust is from thirty nine to that, sixty three and that's a half. the finished bust. Finished bust, right. So she'll say, for instance, I'm a forty bust. So if I looked at her if I were going to fit my bust, I'd go in her size range, 39 and a half to 43 and a quarter. Which, for the record, is the fifth or sixth? Sixth. Sixth. And that would make my bust... Finished bust measurement based on her calculations. 50 and three quarters. So there's a lot of positive ease. Yeah. So I, I, I probably wouldn't do that. I would definitely... I would definitely... Well, the fourth size... The third size is 45 and a quarter. No, that's the fourth. The fourth, one, two, four. Well, the third one is 43. So would I do 43 or would I do, I might do 45 because it is meant to be loose, no? Right. Don't you think? I think so. Yeah. So, again, especially when you're looking at the petite knit pattern, she does do that. She gives you two fit bust so you can find your bust, but then do look at her finished measurements because, you know, just because she says eight inches of positive ease doesn't mean that's what you want correct you know how you want to wear it so in any event um again it's a layering piece keep that in mind right um you know i tend to maybe skimp on my cardigans because i most often don't wear them buttoned so the fact that this is 44 inches if i were to wear it buttoned it would be tighter. It would, yes but but yeah. because it's open and i yeah. usually have a four inch opening let's say mm. it, it almost has the feel of a 40 eight inch finished right, bust, right, right, right. which is why I don't necessarily go for the recommended size Correct. for my size. Correct. But in this particular case, it's buttoned. It's going to be closed. So keep that in mind for the finished measurement. Right. So she gives you four different yarn suggestions, but the bottom line is a gauge is about 20 inches in stock in it. Okay. Which is like a light worsted, right? And so we kitted it with, um, we did, a, did we do it too? No, we did so much. I can't remember, Diane. We did the um, yarn from Bichet Bush, the... Um, we have two... The lamb's wool. That was, did we? That was the we? only thing we did. Right. This one has nine options, I think, and it's all in the one brand. Do you want to get them all and yeah. then we'll show them? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just pulling up the name of the kit. I apologize. I want to give you the actual size that we made it up for. So again, it's called the Lulu Slipover. And the Lulu Slipover includes enough yarn to knit up through 46.75 inch finish bust, which is actually the fifth size. So we went through the fifth size, Pam. Yeah, I know. I'm just missing one. I'm trying to see which one I'm missing. And that is the finished bust measurement. Correct. Correct. Eight. There should be one more. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. There were nine, right? I've I thought so. One. Oh, wait, this one maybe. Did I take this one? No, I took those two. That one, that one, that one. Maybe that it's one. eight. Six, seven, eight. Maybe this one over here. Or one over there. I'm only seeing eight. It is only eight. Okay, there you go. Okay, losing sorry. You <laughs> no, you're not. There you go. So, again, it's the non super wash from Bichet Bush. It's the um, light gray, right? That's one. Yes. This is what is that Beautiful color, right? What does that say, Dan? This gray one beige. is called the, the light gray, are, soft yeah. gray beige. And so this, as you could see, it's got a different tonality. And this is gray brown. So it's gray, but it's got a little bit of brown. Um, this is a great color. This is a soft blue green. Yes. Look at that. Another beautiful color. Right. This one is soft dark gray. And this again is that rose color, right, yes. Dinah? That wood I can't read it, it's one off. Dark rose gray. Dark rose gray. I love that color. That's it's a great color. That I goes love with it. everything. I know. It goes with black. It goes like with it. everything. It's like such a neutral. And then there is light, light peach. peach and red brown. So you have beautiful colors to choose from. Mm -hmm. The kits include five skeins, and that's enough to go up, like we said, to the 46.75 finish bust. Right. Those are all the colors right there. There you go. Uh, if you're looking for other options, you oh, can are, certainly... Oh, there are other options. I mean, yeah. you can use wool stock as a non-superwash. Right. If you wanted superwash, right. you can use the Malabrigo Rios. Uh, what was the gauge on that? Five. 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 You can do 
I mean, hand dyed Madeline and Tosh yep. and knit it to a to yeah. a worsted weight. I mean, some of the suggestions she gave you were a fingering weight with um, mohair. Mohair too, another option if you wanted to mm -hmm. do that. I saw someone did uh, the Rama. Um, Sport with the mohair, DK plus the mohair. Some people did far. I saw someone did far. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there are lots and lots. We'll so, sometimes when you have a pattern like some people did double Sunday. So there are a lot of options. Um, you know, I just look, look at it and see what you have. And also think about just the color, what right. you're gravitating towards. Right. Uh, right. That would probably be a great place You may to like start. a particular yarn, but maybe it's not the color that you envisioned it in, you know. So, you know, when you have a pattern like this, it's always hard for us, not hard, because we have to decide what yarn we want to go with. Right. <laughs> Especially when there are multiple choices and when other things you go with. Right. right. Now, I will tell you that Knits and, um, Knits and Phyllis, um, who emailed me, one of our clients, she also said that there's a podcast called Knits and Pieces. Now, I haven't watched it, so, um, you know, I, I recommend if you want to watch it, you're, you certainly can. They're also hosting a knit along for vests. So, look, if you find a vest by Thea Coleman, you can kill exactly. <laughs> two birds with one stone, hit two knit alongs, and if I, you know, it, it would just be fun to participate, be part of the community. It's always uh, nice to uh, to be a part of something, or unless you like to just knit on your own. That's also fun. There you go. Uh, so that is the Lulu slipover. So we've shown you the Lulu slipover. We've shown you vest number two. And now we have one more thing to show. <laughs> we do. What is it, Diane? Instant gratification. Oh, I couldn't think of what it was. and say, what do we have that I'm not aware of? It's a cardigan. Okay, um, let me just sure. this away. You can tell them. About, I'll show you the picture. I'll give you the picture. Okay. Well, so we have, we have two pictures, right. though. So this is instant uh, gratification. I believe it's designed by Carol Sunday. And it's funny. All of these pieces that we're showing you have the same exact silhouette. A little bit of a cropped cardigan, and it's boxy. So it seems to be the theme of the week. Uh, here it is knit in Ghost Ranch, uh, a spin cycle colorway in the yarn called Plump. As you can see, this cardigan was slightly modified. It was knit a little bit longer, and certainly the sleeves were knit longer. So, two options. Uh, we have spin cycle to show you. We did not show any, um, we don't, this is, this picture is really just to show you the silhouette and the actual, um, the actual, well, the silhouette shows um, the cropped look without the modification. This is the original design. Um, and we have a couple of options to share with you. We have spin cycle and vibe check that can be knit all in vibe check, the right. one colorway. Just like they did all the ghost range. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now I do have to say, Pam, what? when we covered the pattern, if I'm not mistaken, when we went back to look at it, this was another one of those patterns yes, where yes, it had yes. tremendous positive ease. Correct. So instant Correct. gratification. So mm -hmm. we originally made these kits based on what the designer called for, and it included seven skeins of spin cycle plump. Now, seven skeins of spin cycle she plump. Had, she was calling for in the pattern when you read it. 16 inches? 10 of, to 11 to 16 inches of positive right. ease. Which is quite a bit. So when you looked at, like we had a customer in who was a 36 bust, and she was going to make the 30, no, she was a 34 bust or 36 bust, and she was going to make the 38. For the intended positive ease, which gave a... It was a crazy amount of positive ease. Right. <laughs> we even the client thought she'd be swimming in the sweater, yeah, so she decided to go for the smallest, smallest size, size right. which um, still gave her a tremendous amount of positive ease, right. just not as much as what was intended by the designer. So the first size was going to give you a finished bust measurement of forty-seven point five inches, right. which. If I were to do the smaller size, I might, I would definitely add length, right. but, but I would only have seven, right. right. So I would definitely right. s might do the second size, maybe the third, but I wouldn't go for my intended size for my bust right. because I don't particularly like things to be that oversized. Correct. So that being said, 
you would have to reduce the number of skeins <laughs> that we kitted the cardigan for. So this is one colorway. It's called Vibe Check, and you could do that. This was a fade, right, Dana? This was a fade. Which, Again, we originally went into the size based on, did we go this way? How did we do I this? I think it was that way. Yep, you're right there. Okay. That's right. So this was another seven skein fade. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have to, I think it was the other way, Pam, I'm sorry. Well, that this goes way. over there. Like this? Yes. Okay. There we go. There's the fade. There okay. Go. So <clears throat> because it is sized for a tremendous amount of positive ease, it, we, when we originally kitted it, it's with seven skeins, which is what you see. But if in fact you do want fewer skeins, uh, just let us know which end you'd like to eliminate and we'd be happy to reduce it. Right, and, and I will say the p picture that Diana held up of the ghost range, that knitter. She did use seven skeins. She made it, yeah, she added in her ribbing. and um, So she added length in her right, ribbing to right, make it longer. Right. And she may have added body length. Right. So this particular knitter used seven skeins, right. which is what we based our... Right. seven skein model off of for the right. plump. So again, take a look at that again and look at how you like your sweaters. That's why it's so careful. It's so, it's so, not careful. It's so important to carefully look at the pattern. A hundred percent. To look at intended positive is ease. Is it finished measurement? Finished. Is it, you know. Actual. You need to read between the lines and pay attention. And that's why if you have any questions, you can always call up and ask. Yes. We'd be more than happy to help you with that. So we did these two kits in um, spin cycle. Spin cycle. But then we also did it in Lang Cloud Tweed, which is a new yarn. I think we've shown it once or twice this fall. It was a follow-up of uh, Lang Cloud from last year. Yes. And this, you can see it has those great, like, raisiny dots and dashes. And um, I think Dinah was, was this the one you were calling Tiger? You know, I st have to um, make a correction. Sure. I apologize. Instant gratification is designed by Mini Me Knit Design. Yes, yes. What did you say? I don't want to say it again. Oh, don't I was say wrong. it again. Okay. <laughs> I was wrong. So Mini Me, M-I-N-I-M-I, -I -M -I, Knit Design is the designer for... Um, this design, Instant which is, gratification. yes, mm -hmm. it's Christina T. Gerlanda. Gerlanda. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what I wanted to show you, thank goodness I checked that. There's uh, one of the knitters who made this cardigan mm -hmm. actually knit it in cloud, not cloud tweed, but cloud, the original. And we just wanted to share it with you. Right. The original cloud. Yes. The original cloud. There you go. And here it is. So that the is the original vibe. cloud. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like she also modified it, she made did. it longer. She says she did modify yes. it. Yeah. And you can always contact this knitter. This knitter was um, Suniki, S-U-N-N-E-K-E -E on Ravelry. And you can ask look her, her up and were. ask her what her mods were. Right. Uh, so we did show it. We do have kits. Um, we did funny. them with the tweed, though, the cloud tweed. Yes. So this is the one colorway, which I think, Dinah, you were saying reminds you of a tiger. Yes. <laughs> this is another colorway, which is just, I think, basically just some brights, right? Love it. It's got super fun. Pinks, purples, golds. This, if you're a pink person, this might be your jam. It's mm -hmm. got bright pink, light pink, almost like a soft red. And if you want to be tweed. a little more sedate, we love this one. It's the blues and the beiges and the browns, the teals. Yeah. Look at that. Is that gorgeous? They're both going to end up beautiful. beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we wanted to give you that option, a fun option, if you wanted to do that in the um, cloud yarn. Now you yes, it's instant gratification is the name of the cardigan. It's um, I should say this is three skeins if you were to use this. Correct. Because it does have two hundred and sixty meters. So, Big price difference. Mm -hmm. So if budget is something that you need to consider, uh, you should definitely have a look. All beautiful options, and you do you. There you go. So that is what we have to show you today. There's always something new coming out, right, Diana? Yes, absolutely. Um, I just want to thank new. everyone for, you know, reaching out. It's always so nice when you send suggestions mm -hmm. and emails. Mm -hmm. uh, we read them. 
Absolutely. We take them into consideration. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, Phyllis had made a suggestion for Riptide, and I think there was another one. I think it was called Smoke Show. Mm -hmm. So there were a couple other vest options, and we work with you. So I will take those down. I will send Phyllis her specific um, requests, mm -hmm. and if there's something that you would like, we can always arrange a FaceTime to do a shopping. Um, oh, yeah, sure. To, to shop via FaceTime, you could email us your special requests. We're so happy to work with you any way you would like. I'm just reminded when touching this that I, I burnt my hands last night. That's Touch. like a crisis. How'd you burn your hand? <laughs> I was making pizza and I took it out of the oven and I put oh, it on the counter and then for some reason I went to move something and you know, I'm not thinking, I just took it out of a four hundred degree oven. I you grabbed the it. Pan? I grabbed it with this, my oh, first my three fingers, but this is the one that got more burnt. But look at this. My fingers probably so calloused. My mother <laughs> my can thumb. touch pans yeah. out of the oven. Right. I am so sensitive. Oh no, I'm not I can't I yeah, I don't tend touch to touch anything. Oh, is that right? Oh my goodness. If it's like a little hot, like I need the handle on a Really? Mug. Yes. Really? When I make I have, one of gut shells, you know, they're very fine, and you put the batter, it's like a pancake, you put the batter in, you make it thin, but then you have to quickly flip it. Like it starts to curl up, I can use that. my finger and no. pull it over. Use my, I mean, not that I not. should do that, I shouldn't do that, but... Now I know why I don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But anyway, I'm just, I'm sorry to interrupt you, I was just being reminded, saying, why does my hand hurt? Because I burnt it last night. Unbelievable. I'm finding it hard to keep my hands moisturized right now. It's I so said the same out. thing yesterday. The same thing yesterday. I said my hands it's look crazy. like like they're so dry. I think, I, I think what I'm going to do now. Let's go for a dip. No, no, no. What? I'm going to put Aquaphor on my hands before Vaseline. I put yeah. before I put the cream on. I put that on at night before I go to bed. But idea. you know what? Does it make a difference? I don't know. Yeah, it just I don't rubs know. off. Maybe you need to dip your hands, you know. But my, my, the funny part is the reason I mention it in terms of knitting is the minute you do something to your hands, you always think about knitting. Oh, can I knit? <laughs> so scared of falling for that reason. Right. Right. Anyhow, we it's are going to sign off. Thank Have you for joining us. a wonderful week. This was nice doing this early in the yeah. day, Pam. Get some, get some knitting done this week. Hopefully, I'll have that done, and I'll be on to the next thing. There you go. And there you go. All right. Take care, everyone. Uh, just a heads up, if any of you are planning on coming to Vogue Knitting Live, come a day or two early. You can visit us here at the oh, Knitting yeah, Place right Thursday right. and Friday. We'll be open from 1230 to 330. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll have some special events. So, so stay tuned. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.